Well, welcome to the uh, Fifth Dimensional Academy of Higher Consciousness. Today is August 14th, and I'm broadcasting live from Los Angeles. So it's nice to see you all. <clears throat> um, let's just, uh, like always, we're going to do a short meditation to just get centered and come back into the unified field within ourselves. So <clears throat> let's just close our eyes. And as always that I've mentioned, you just simply bring your attention inwards and you look for the source of your thoughts. <clears throat> you look for the source of where your emotions come from. You look for the source of where everything else comes from. So it's just very simply, you divert your attention inwards to one point. Where were you before you were born? Where do your thoughts come from? What was before your thinking? So you bring your attention to that place. That means we're not talking about more thinking. We're simply talking about bringing the attention to a focal point within ourselves. And it should be effortless. If you're putting effort into doing it, then you're not doing it correctly. Simply bring your attention inwards and keep your attention on one point without really putting an effort into it. And take a deep breath and relax. This should be effortless. You don't need to do a mantra. You don't need to do any kind of visualization because if you're doing a mantra, then you're activating your mind if you're doing visualization, you're activating your mind. What we're simply doing is we're going beyond the mind prior to any thoughts rising and staying in that place, resting in this place.
slowly, slowly come back. Come back here. As you are bringing your attention inwards to a place which is pre thought, and sometimes on the surface there's a lot of activities, so the mind may not quiet down, and there may be a lot of noise, and you're hearing voices. But that's not who you are. The one who hears the voices is silent. That's everything on the surface happening. All these noises that you're hearing in your mind, it's happening on the surface because you're turning your attention inwards towards the source. So naturally, you can hear things, or it's quiet. It could be very quiet, it could be very noisy. But there is an entity, there's a being, which we call it you, is aware of the noise and is aware of silence. That's what you're looking for. That's where you're bringing your attention to. The one which is aware of the noise and the one which is aware of silence. Okay. Now I'm going to unmute our dear sister. Hi, Monica. Hello. So you, you have a question. And go ahead. I'd I, I like to share that with uh, our audience. So can you ask me your question again, please? So sometimes I see a fear uh, to be another person, or I am fear to die. Okay. So sometimes you have a fear to be another person. Ye yes, I, I want to be uh, as I am, and I, I love life and I want to live but I, I know I'm going to die sooner or later. Okay. And so sometimes the fear of death comes. Yes. Right. So that's a very natural uh, phenomena. <clears throat> it's, it's a thought that rises. So the thought comes that, Monica, you are going to die and, and you're no longer going to be here. So what's the difference between this thought than a thought that I would like to have a cup of coffee? I would like to go to a coffee shop and get a uh, cappuccino. I mean, you may get a thought, comes yeah. from a desire that, oh, I really would like to go to town or um, my favorite coffee shop and get a cappuccino. But uh, that, that is thoughts uh, that, that I uh, threw away because uh, I'm not uh, 
like to have thoughts of I would like to go to Hammer when when I heard that uh, and uh, lots of small thoughts, but they go away very fast and then I'm empty again. Okay, but but this thought that I'm going to die and I'm not going to be around, how long does it last when it comes up? <coughs> well, it's more like an emotion. Right. It's like an emotion and I forget about it. Right, right. So this thought is threatening your existence. So it it's, I mean, it's a vi very valid question what you're asking because you're not the only person struggling with this issue and this thought and millions and millions of people do. So it's a very valid, I'm so glad you brought this up. Um, so this thought is threatening our very foundation or our existing existence. But let's look at the, uh, our foundation and our existence. This thought arises that I am going to die and I'm not going to be no more. But let's dissect this sentence. I am going to die. So what is the first thing I'm saying? The first word comes out of my mouth is, is what? I. I, right. I am going to die. So let's examine this I who is going to die. Let's, let's take a look at it. Let's, let's go inwards and let's examine the source of this word, I. Let's take a look at it. So all of us, let's take a moment and, and look inwards and let's question this, this I, this me, this place, this word that we're attaching to the source of our existence that we calling it I, let's examine it for a moment. Let's take a look at it. So that, look, that I you speak about is beside my, my real uh, source. It, it's uh, two, two thoughts. It's I and it's the emptiness in my source. Do you understand what I? Yeah. It's two. I and the, the feeling I have. Okay. So when you're looking at it, you, you, you find, when you're examining it, what, what do you find? You find emptiness next to it? What, what do you discover? Yes, I find emptiness, and uh, and uh, still that I is there. So it's two things. Okay. In my life. Right. Okay. I want you to do it with me. I w I want you to go back in, and everybody else do the same thing. Go back in, and look. Go all the way to this I, me. And take a look at it and, and, and see what you find. And if you still there is something there, I want you to question it. And the question is, who am I? Who is this I? And look, go a little bit deeper. And there may be some kind of fear comes or your mind comes and throws, tries to throw some 
tantrum at you, but don't stay there. Just go a little bit deeper and see what happens. What do you come to when you do that? So when you go inwards and you come to this me, this I, and you're questioning it, what happens after that? Does it become quiet? Does it become empty? Do you go in a deeper meditation? Does your mind get more activated or it becomes quiet? What happens? I, I see the I now, but, and not the emptiness, just the I. Okay. Is this I a thought or it's real? It's real. Okay. So what can it what can happen to it when the body dies? Where would it go? Obviously, there is a mechanism here. There is a being here thinking. There is a being here sensing. And there is concern. There is consciousness. There is an awareness right now. And we call it Monica is concerned about her existence. That after this body dies, what happens to me? I, I is still here. Yeah. Yes. You, yes. You are here. Yes. I was uh, six years old and my grandmother had died and uh, I was in back of the car with my parents were driving. I very clearly remember this. I was looking out through the window and it was raining. Raindrops were falling down on a, on a window and I, I was just Wonder, I was just thinking that when the body dies, when I die, where would I go? That thought came for me, and then it was very clear for me that how could I die? How, how could I be no more? How could I not exist? So I asked my parents that when, when somebody dies, what happens? 
And my parents told me, you, you are no more. You're finished. And I very clearly remember I told my parents, that is not true. That is not true. Because I, I am always here. And I didn't know anything about spiritual teachings or any of these things that I know about now, but it was very, very clear that what could happen to me, my existence is here, and how could that no longer be? When you go deeper inside and you come across the presence of yourself, the presence which is here, the presence that's always been here, and you come in touch with that. And some of us can call this meditation, a deep state of meditation, or we can put any words we want to it. We can attach a word, a description of an explaining this either to ourselves or to somebody else. But those of us who've been together, the core group of group that we have been together many times, and we've done the work together and we go deep inside, and we come and we we go beyond the mind and we arrive in this place within ourselves that is just presence, it's here. And it's com completely expanded and it's totally connected. And we dive into the place and it's very quiet and it's very still and there is a sense you can call it bliss that's that's a word for it but there is a sense of presence and in that there is a knowing that all is very well and all the fear and doubts they disappear. And in those moments that you're in that place, well, however long that is, there is no thoughts or any kind of sense that you can disappear or anything can happen to you. Everything disappears. And those are the moments that you've gone beyond your thinking mind. You dive back into your own essence, which is pure presence. And in those moments that you reconnect to that place, it's very clear that you've never been born and you would never die. Your being, your essence, before taking the mind, before taking a form, is eternal. It's always here. Here is the only place there is. There is nowhere else outside of here. You cannot go anywhere else outside of here. The form falls, but the witness or the awareness is here. It may pick up another form so it can experience third dimension, the world of duality, and it can experience 
through the five senses, the challenges of life, the pleasures of life. But you cannot die. It's impossible for you to die. Because for you to die, you have to be born. There has to be a birth. There has to be a time limitation to you to, to be born and then you die. But if you have never been born, how can you die? And this birth and death, it's simply a fracture of the mind that it appears and it always comes with the single word called I, there's this sense of me, I am, separated from the source, my eternal being, which is always here. And in this imagination, imaginary I thought, comes the sense of time. Space-time gets created. And all of a sudden, it appears, this world appears to it. So comes the, the imagination of the I thought, I am someone separated from everything. My existence is very important, and I have to defend it and make sure to preserve it, that those senses come with it. But as this appears as a thought, then it comes the space and comes time with it. But why that space-time disappears, then when you are in absolute silence and you're still and you divert back your attention inwards to pre-thoughts and you go to this place and you've all been there with me all of you have been there we've gone to this place many times together and we go back to this place and all of a sudden there is no time and there is no space and your body also disappears and it's just pure being. So what happens to your body? What happens to your age? What happened to your story? Where do they go? Why do they disappear if they're so real? Why there's a disappearance of this reality that we, we call our reality and we call it our lives, why does it disappear? If it's really real, if it's that real, then we should never be able to go into this place of nothingness or this place of pure silence. This place which is beyond, and you can see everything else from there, you would never have access to it. But when you are either in a waking state or sleep state, but now we're talking about waking state, and you're here, and you're able to go beyond your thinking mind, and you go into this place that there is no thoughts. There's not even the thought I, of I. That's the last place and your last post. And you go even beyond that one. And you come to this place. 
And it's just pure being. And that pure being, you're not even observing anything. You even go beyond that because you go beyond the witness because the witness is witnessing something. So there's still an subject and an object, but then you go beyond that one. And it's just is. And we've gone together to this place. And yes, it's amazing. It's incredible. You can call it pure bliss or pure being. But when you go to this place, when you're there, you never say, wow, this is pure bliss or pure being. Because there is not a you capable of saying that thing. You're, you're not there as a person to say this is an amazing experience. It's just that amazing thing is in, the, in, those, in that duration. But only when you come back and you pick up the I, I am Zarathustra, I am Monica, I am someone. So now you come back into time and space. Then you say, oh, wow. Zarathustra, you know what? I was gone. I was one. I was completely blissed out. So, but not when you become the background. When you become the background, which is pure presence, you don't say anything. Because there is no you, there is no separation. There's no someone there just saying, wow, I am, I am one, I'm gone, I'm blissed out. Blissed out being gone is the only, only reality which is happening. And no one's there to experience it. The experiencer is not there. It's just the being. And the being in its pure form is not experiencing anything because there is no duality. Experiencing requires duality. There is someone experiencing something. In pure oneness, there is no experiencer and nothing's being experienced. It simply is. So it's virtually impossible for you, Monica, to die. You've always been here, sweetheart, and you're always going to be here. Because here is the only place there is. The body can die, it's got a duration, and that's with each and every one of us. But you cannot die. And thoughts and feelings come, but they're just thoughts and feelings. Just like any other thought and any other feeling that comes and goes. That's the good news. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank yeah. you for bringing this up. I appreciate it. And this is a very imp precious moment that we have. And I'm so glad 
that we have connected because in this stage of your life, you have come to this understanding and liberation has become possible. And if you stay with your practice, you begin to see that you're really not your thinking mind. And this whole thing is a creation of the mind. The mind has created it. Do you advise me to, to practice every day? Because I, I try practice every day. Or do I do it, can I do it too much? No, you can never do it too much because when you're doing it, it's very, uh, the, the proof is in the pudding. When you sit in silence, it brings you peace. Mm. And it brings you bliss. Mm. So you can't do it too much. Yeah. It just brings you back into your center. Mm. You know, you, you stay silent, you go into the unified field of the oneness and you know, all these thoughts starts, you know, all these clouds, things appearing, and then slowly, slowly everything goes away. And you come back into the center and you come back to this knowing that all is well. And then your vibration changes. You come back into this very peaceful place and you can see it because your worries and the fears go away, the anxiety goes away, and the people around you, they can feel it. They can see your calmness. And everything calms down. Because you get centered and you come back to peace, and then they mellow down too. When we go into the anxiety and worry, then we're affecting the people around us and then they're starting reflecting it back to us. So I'm sure you've experienced this, that since you have been doing your meditation, you've been working on yourself, which you've been doing a great job, I'm sure you have experienced that in your surrounding, your household, and your family, everything else, everyone else is mellowing down around you. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because you're turning to the Buddha in your family. You're the one who's doing the work because you're ready for this and it's affecting everyone else. So not only you're giving yourself a chance to attain liberation in this life, is you're giving a major gift to people around you. Because they can see something has transformed in you and there is there is a light there's an aura that you're carrying and that's certainly affecting them they may not understand it now some of them later on may follow your path but they're certainly feeling it even though they don't understand it because you're bringing peace. You're bringing tranquility, peace to the house. By recognizing yourself, by recognizing your own true nature. Your true nature is presence. And presence is here, and presence is eternal. It's always been here, 
It will always be here, despite of what appears to be. The appearance, it appears to be a, a life, a world. It appears to be chaotic. It appears to be the war. It appears to be that the ice is melting. It appears that to be that the world is changing with all this technology and we don't know where it's gonna go and what is gonna happen. And all this uncertainty, all these worries, all this stuff, all this chaos appearing. It appears, it disappears, it appears, it disappears. But the master, the Buddha remains center. The Buddha remains in their center, unaffected, and this concern to what appears and disappears. Completely indifferent to the appearance and not being fooled. It only looks like it's going somewhere and something is happening. It only looks like it. And your body is a part of that. It's going to live its life. It's going to live its, play its role and its duration into the lila, into the play. But you're not your body and you're not your mind or the emotions. You're simply aware of them, but you're not them. And all the fears and anxieties and worries that appear, they appear to the body, not to you. Because you are free. And you just stay in this place. And the more you stay in this place, the more everything starts to look illusory. The material that they've used to build this world, like when they're building, building a high rise and they're using cement and iron, they're using wood, whatever they're using to build buildings, the material that they use to build this, this world is change. They're using change as the building block of this world. And since it's changing all the time, it cannot hold its structural integrity for more than a period of time. So since it's built out of change, it's con continuously going to change from one thing to another thing. So it's face changing all the time. So nothing can stay the same. It's always going to change. That's, change is the only constant thing because that's what it's made out of. And it's not real. Real is that which never changes. Real is that which is always here. 
always been here and always will be here. That's the only real thing. And what is that and where do you find that? For that, you just go inwards and you reconnect to yourself, the real you. And you will see it for yourself firsthand that the real you, your essence, never changes. It's always here and it's always still and it's always the same. And you can try it at any moment. Once you discover the pathway of how you can you go into this place, try it any day, any time. Try it now, try it a year from now, on, try it five years from now. On. As you see your body's changing, your body's getting older, you lose your hair, your skin's changing, your eyes can't see very well, your, your, your bone structures starts losing its density, people around you disappear, the world's changing, the architecture around you changes, governments come and go, economies come and go, so 10 years, 20 years, 30 years from now on, every time you go back into the unified field, it's always the same. It never changes. It's always still, it's always silent, and it's always bliss, blissful, always. Every master who has ever appeared on this planet and attained liberation points out to this place. And this place is not out of your reach. It's your own self is the very foundation and essence of each and every one of us. Once we become aware of it and we touch it, then you reconnect to it and you remain in that place. And it's not very difficult. It requires us to just be quiet. You have to be quiet because it's not something you can discover it through mental activities. It's not an, maybe in the beginning it's, a, it's an intellectual understanding and we try to grasp it or get an idea of it with our mind. But then, when we learn meditation and we we'll sink in with the, the, with the correct direction, guidance is very important. And we're guided correctly to this place. And when we're guided to this place, then Every time you come back to this place, you experience pure silence and you experience yourself. Because there's no thoughts, it's, it's silence. And if you look around, it's very simple. Always you can examine things for yourself because we're intelligent beings and we have the ability of examination. It's very simple. Just look around and pay attention. 
how much are we being taught? Sorry, I need to stop for a moment because there's a plane flying above me. How much of our schooling, how much of our education from the time we were born until now has been about being silence? How much have they been teaching us silence? When you go to the church, when our religious studying and education, how much of it goes into silence? Our schooling, how much of it was about silence? Most spiritual teachings, how much of it is about silence? How much of it tells you, don't think, be quiet? Very small percentage, very, very little percentage is about that. Everything else is about activating your mind. And this world that you appears to be and you're a part of it is as a result of an activated mind. An active mind has created it. So the more you get involved with thinking, the more you're into the matrix, the more you become a part of this world. The more you go into silence, the more you disconnect from it, the more you give yourself a chance to reconnect with yourself, your very essence. And the more you give yourself a chance to recognize your eternal being, the truth of who you are. So as I said, the proof is in the pudding. You practice silence for a period of time and see what happens. See if your life changes. See if peace comes, tranquility comes. You just see for yourself whether the quality of your life is changing or not. You don't have to buy what I'm, what I'm sharing with you. You don't have to take my word and accept it. You don't have to, it's not something new. It's not something I've come up with. This is not an original thing. I'm not the first person who's come, come and share this. It's been around for a long time. And it's your preference. You can you try a lot of different things. We all do. You can try this too. If it doesn't work, move on and do something else. But at least it's free. You don't have to spend money to be silent. You don't have to change your lifestyle to be silent. You don't have to shave your head. You don't have to go to Tibet or India to a monastery. You don't have to become a vegetarian or a vegan. 
or give up your, you like to smoke cigarettes, keep smoking cigarettes. You can still be silent. You like to have a drink here and there, have your drink. It has nothing to do with being silent. But try it and see what happens. Learn to be quiet. First, physically you learn to be quiet. Then you learn to go beyond your mind and find this place inside yourself, which is silent. And then see for yourself, examine it for yourself. Is it changing your life? Are you becoming peaceful? Is the quality of your life changing? Does it affect your environment? Is the reaction of people around you changes? There's only one way to find out. It's a cheap solution. But most people on the planet, they either don't know about it or they don't believe it or it's a very difficult thing for them to do because they're conditioned heavily to think. Their mind is very much activated and the mind is conditioned from childhood into various different belief systems whatever that belief system is, whether you come from Christianity, or you come from an Islamic world, or you come from a native land or whatever, whatever is the story, it doesn't matter. The mind is conditioned. And it wants to pick up stories. But this place I'm talking about is the very source of all stories. All stories come from this place. This is pre-story, pre-civilization, pre-creation. This is the very place that everything comes from it. It's the very source of everything. And that is in you. And that is within your own reach. All you have to do is be quiet, be silent. And it will draw you more in by itself because that is what is speaking right now. That is what does the transmission. That's what did the transmission to you. That's what is doing the transmission through me to you. And that's what is creating this attraction. And this sense of resonance, that you feel resonant through it. There's a res. You feel attracted to something. Something's pulling you in. So it will do the work. You don't have to worry about it. You just initiate and you bring your attention in that word. It will take care of the rest by itself. So it's 11.09. Has anybody has any questions? For those of you who are on Facebook and Instagram, um, I'm not able to answer your questions. If you would like to communicate with me, come on my, uh, sign up through my website, it's zaratustra.tv, and we're using a system called Zoom, 
So you will be getting a link and you can come on our system. Then we get to see each other and we get to talk to one another. So um, I'm not able to communicate through Facebook and Instagram. It's just too many devices for me to, to use. So, and if you would like to communicate with me, you can always, uh, through Facebook, you can write through the Academy page. We have the um, 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. You can, as an open group, you can join in and communicate with us or write an email to us through info at fifthdhealing.com. Uh, You're welcome to write an email to us or go through my website. My website is under construction. I'm coming up with a new website. So um, not everything's intact and hopefully by Friday we have it up and running fully. Okay, there's one message here. Okay, hi, I have a question. When I tune in, ear cracks in the middle of my head, sometimes my ears. Okay. Um, uh, hi, Kim. Do you want to, can you hear me? Uh, Kim, is your audio working? So I just unmuted you. Hi. Yes, yes, I can hear you. Okay. So when, when you're meditating, you're hearing cracks in the middle of your head? Yes, when I tune in uh, for a prayer or meditate or just at the beginning or throughout, I do hear uh, cracks, like little tiny small cracks. Right. And sometimes right. my ears pop. My, my ear kind of feels expanded. My whole head feels expanded. How long ha have you been experiencing the cracks? Probably eight months, since eight months ago. Okay, so it's your pineal gland, your, your attention. So are you meditating on your third eye when you're meditating? No, no, I'm not, but I do feel it in my third eye. I, I, I believe it got activated about two and a half years ago. And I do feel the pressure and the pulsing and, and uh, everything. Right. So this is very common because when the pineal gland, uh, normally most pineal glands, uh, most human beings, because of the excess fluoride that we're using, they become, cla uh, they become calcified. Of the excess okay. So the pineal gland becomes calcified. And then when you start working on yourself and you bring your attention inwards, so the pineal gland st starts to decalcify and you're hearing the cracks, like <coughs> things like that is happening. So it's a decalcification of pineal gland. So it's nothing to worry about. It's actually good news. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I've been detoxifying with pure iodine drops. For okay. For how long have you been doing that? I, I did it for, I would say, one and a half year with drops. Okay. Okay. So, and do you feel any changes? Yes, absolutely. I, I, can, uh, the, the, I can tune in back, connect better, and uh, the pressure is getting stronger and stronger. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, you're, you're the only one who knows. So you can, you can maybe if it gets too uncomfortable, you can take your foot off the gas. So you're the only one you're who knows what is happening, but I wouldn't worry about anything. Perfect. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for hosting. Kim, can I ask how many drops of iodine do you take a day? I used to, not anymore. I stopped. Uh, I, I, I would do, I do one syringe. It's, I think, 0.5 milliliter. Like one, so I, I don't go by drops. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay. 
All right, so uh, Shadi John. Hi, Shadi. Um, can I call you after the academy and we can talk? Yeah. Yeah. When I, when I unmute you, there's a lot of static. So um, let me contact you later on because I have to go to the other part of town after here. And so I'll call you when I'm on, driving. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, it's nice to see you all. Our next academy is going to be next week, same time on Wednesday. So I look forward to seeing you. Um, feel free to keep in touch with us via, via Facebook or through email or my website. Um, one moment. Hi, Suzanne. Hi, Savadusta. Yeah, nice to see you. Thank you very nice much. Nice to see you. Thank you very much for your email. I'm going to write back to you later on and uh, and talk to you about um, your email, okay? Switzerland. Switzerland, yeah. yes. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I, I will contact you later on. Uh, Perfect. We're connected on WhatsApp, right? Yes, we so, are. Yeah. I'll, I'll okay. contact you, okay? Perfect. Looking okay. forward to... Yeah. Ni nice seeing you, honey. Appreciate <laughs> it. Okay. All right, sending you lots of love and light. Hope you have a wonderful week and I look forward to seeing you next week. Namaste.